so thank you for um, sticking around and listening to this. This is um, from one of the Monstrous May stories. I think it was day five, uh, feeding time. So um, the original one version I did is up on um, the Kofi link. I've cut this one down a little bit um, to obviously save time and everything. Uh, so yeah, um, it's called, uh, what did I call it? Uh, it's called What Is and uh, What Was. Tell me again. Bethany held Eve's trembling hands in hers and with a warm smile repeated the words. Tell me again, she said. Eve took a deep breath, felt the crisp air invade her lungs. She wanted to hold on to that cold sensation, that calm. She nodded. All right, Eve said, I'll try. She shifted her weight, attempting to find comfort on the fallen log. Bethany sat beside her, hands still holding on as if Eve might dissolve into the morning mist. So, she began, we decided to go camping. We, Bethany asked, sorry, Yes, um, me, Mal, Tia, and Eve paused, her brows knitting together, staring at the decaying leaves beneath their feet. There was something else, someone else, she was sure of it. She tried to think, but it was like the name was on the tip of her tongue. Bethany squeezed her hands once more. I couldn't come, she prompted. Eve lifted her head to meet Bethany's gaze. Yeah, Eve said. You couldn't come, and we, me, Mel, and Tia drove here. Tia wanted to get back to nature or something. I just wanted to toast marshmallows and get drunk. Eve tried to picture their journey, remembering their frequent stops because Mel had a bladder the size of a pea, and she remembered their singing along to songs they were sure were only a couple of years old instead of nearly 20. However, she couldn't remember who had driven them. Had she driven them? Wait, could she drive? Bethany pressed, pressed down upon Eve's hand once more, bringing her back to the present. With a small shake of her head, Eve continued, grateful for Bethany's company. She told her about the first day, the vodka and the campfire, all fun. Some movement around the tents at night, but usual forest stuff, creature stuff, nothing strange. Eve then explained that the next day was when things began to go wrong, that Tia had wanted to go hiking, disappearing with Mal while she hung back to stay with their belongings. When they returned, Tia had announced that they'd found a cave or a cavern. She said it was like a fairy grotto. Mal said it only looked like damp, rock, damp rocks to them, but Tia insisted that that's because Mal hadn't explored it like she had. The sun had started to set by that point, so they'd pull up a campfire and talked. But something was off about Tia, Eve said. She kept forgetting things. Not stuff that just slipped her mind, but whole events. People. She remembered Mal's confusion, then anger at what they thought was an insensitive prank. All the while, that puzzled expression had remained upon Tia's face. Things got worse, Eve continued, but not straight away. The next morning, both Mal and Tia acted as if nothing had happened, and I was fine with that. They said they'd head off on a hike if that was okay. I told them, no problem, said I'd hope they got to explore that cave a bit more. Mal gave me this weird stare, but Tia hurried them off. With a small nod, Bethany smiled and asked, what happened then? Eve stared down at her knees. Well, that night when they came back, they were acting really strange. Tia just completely forgot my name at one point. Mal was better, but not by much. They said they'd been to the cave, gone further this time, that, that Tia was right, that it was the most beautiful thing they'd ever seen, that I needed to see it too. Eve paused to clear her throat, so sore it felt like she'd been talking for hours. Maybe she had. She couldn't remember. Eve frowned at the forest floor and she found her gaze being pulled back towards the campsite. Bethany placed one finger under Eve's jaw and guided her back to face forward again. Go on, Bethany said, then what? Eve pulled away from Bethany's cold touch and blinked. 
oh yeah i i asked them if you were if they were okay i said we should leave maybe drive to the nearest town and did you eve opened her mouth to reply but the answer would not come frustrated she bit down on the inside of her cheek willing the words to exist she felt a jolt inside her mind a scratch a warning but one that she chose to ignore no she said slowly as if the fact was a surprise to her no we we decided to stay see how things were in the morning and then the scratching in eve's mind began to speed up frantic like a rat scrambling to escape from a trap but she could not stop herself now the words falling from her mouth unbidden then there was the cave Bethany held up a finger and with a cheery smile added, uh, 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 you've missed something out. Eve wondered how Bethany knew, how Bethany could possibly know. Yeah, she replied, you're right. This, this pulsating white light burst through my tent and there was this noise that, it, it was like the absence of sound. Silly thing. Isn't that silence? No. Eve cried, the loudness of her voice echoing around them. You don't understand. It was like the world just wasn't there. And when I went outside, go on, Bethany said, when you went outside, the scratching in her mind was now a gouging and Eve cried out in pain. She felt tears pouring down her cheeks as she remembered the darkness, the stone and the lights beneath. Finally, her will relented and she choked out the words, there wasn't anything but the cave. Eve collapsed into Bethany's arms then and let her sobs devour her whole, gave herself up to the moment and prayed to God, any God, that she would remain there. But Bethany rested one hand upon Eve's back and said, and what did you see in the cave? Eve clamped her teeth together. If she didn't speak it, she reasoned, then it wasn't real. It hadn't happened. Bethany placed her hand under Eve's chin and gently but firmly lifted it up until she was staring deep into Eve's eyes. Bethany asked again, what did you see? Eve did not notice that Bethany's lips had not moved, that they had never moved. Eve cried, feeling the creature pulling at her mind, searching out every morsel of memory it could. Please she begged, don't take her from me. Bethany, or the creature that was now Bethany, tilted its head. I already did, darling, she said, nodding towards the three desiccated bodies by the tent that Eve had sought out, even in her unknowing. So tell me, the creature said, what did you see? A scream tore its way up from Eve's throat, just like the last time, and she stood and she wrapped her hands around the creature's throat, just like the last time. I saw you take my Beth. She remembered the pleading in Bethany's eyes as the monster had cradled her head in her hands, in its hands, almost tenderly. Her sobs, her silence. Eve pushed her fingers into the creature's neck, hoping to feel a satisfying snap, but all she could think was, how could I forget her? How could I? The creature grinned then, exposing a toothless mouth for what need had it for teeth? I took who she was, the creature said, but you're different. I took her from you, one small piece at a time. The creature winked. It's more delicious that way. Eve roared and pressed her thumbs deep into the creature's throat, wanting to make it feel the force of her rage, her sorrow. But the creature just tapped her on the brow and the Eve that was flowed away, leaving her quiet and still, ready to become the Eve that now is. The thing that was not Beth eased Eve down onto the log and placed her hands back in her lap. Hey, the creature said, and the Eve that now is, Eve the lesser, blinked in confusion. Sorry, Eve said. Can I help you? The creature smiled. You were telling me about your trip. Oh, Eve said. Was I? 
she felt unsure, but the person she saw in front of her had such warm, familiar eyes. It was like coming home. I guess I was, she said after a moment. Yeah, um, so we decided to go camping. Me and Mal. Eve paused, throat dry and searched for words she could not find. Wait, she said, did I already mention that? The creature smiled, joyous at the meal to come and said, tell me again. <laughs>